Grinstead Gaddis. And um, how did you know Tara? Tara was my sister, my only sibling. Um, now before you give, well, have you prepared a statement to get to the court today? Yes, I have. Before you give that statement, let me ask you, what was your mother's name? Faye. And is your mother still living? No, she is not. Was she also Tara's mother? Yes, she was. When did Miss Faye pass away? June 2008. And um, did Miss Faye ever have any information about what had happened to Tara prior to her passing She did away? not. If you've prepared something you'd like the court to hear, you can tell them now. Yes. Thank you. On Monday, October 23rd, 2005, at 10 a.m., a phone call would change my life, that of my husband and son and my mom forever. They can't find Tara. Four words. They can't find Tara. Four small words. They threw our entire family into a spinning cyclone that has lasted 16 years, six months, and 27 days. We are still living in that out of control spiral. Days turned into weeks, weeks rolled into months, months migrated into years. This contagious continuous nightmare is our life. There's little refuge. Time heals some wounds, but others are still raw. Over the course of the last three weeks, reliving this heinous act that Ryan Alexander Duke committed has ripped open those wounds and doused him with acid. The damage that was called to Tara's family by his criminal acts can never be undone. The best we can hope for is to one day make peace with the emptiness that was once filled with Tara. She is no longer walking in an earthly body, but in a heavenly body, hand in hand with our mother, Faye Grinstead. Ryan may have desecrated her physical body to nothing but ashes, but he did not erase her memories from our mind, her voice from our ears, and her love from our hearts. Edmund Burke said, there is no safety for honest men but to believe all evil of evil men. Evil men do not always snarl. Some smile charmingly. Those are the most dangerous. Ryan Duke is that kind of evil. He is an introvert. Bo Duke's an extrovert. Ryan is sneaky dangerous. Bo more open about the danger he exudes. Evil comes in all shapes and sizes. The vile human that is the defendant sitting at the table in the front of the courtroom is a perfect and prime example. His statue is rather small, but the demons in him are huge. In the 40 years that I have worked in the medical health care field, I've encountered many, many people with addictions of all kinds. In fact, my husband, Dr. Larry Gaddis, dedicates part of his medical practice to addictionology. I'm sure everyone in this courtroom today has known many alcoholics, but do they make a habit of breaking into people's houses just to steal $20? I don't think so. What about the addicts who are hooked on prescription medication? How many of them help to move a human corpse? None of the ones I've ever been acquainted with have done anything remotely offensive. Unfortunately, in today's society, so many of us have known folks who are addicted to street drugs, 
crystal meth, cocaine, etc. Of all of the ones with those problems who have crossed my path, I have never, ever, ever known one who burned a human body. Ryan Dukes used all of these excuses for why he participated in this crime. That and the fact that he was afraid of Bo Dukes, his very best friend for over a decade. A friend that he states petrified him so much that they actually lived together during most of that time. When Ryan testified last week and was asked why he was telling his version of the truth now, he answered, because Bo is in prison. Bo Dukes was convicted on federal charges and sentenced to 27 months of prison time in 2013. He was not released until 2017. I would like to ask Ryan why he did not come forward at that time and confess. Bo was in prison, so this excuse of fear just does not cut it. Had Ryan come forward, even in 2013, that would have been four less years of torment that Tara's sister, family, had to endure. Ryan did not even come forward in 2017. He was caught. He confessed because he got caught. There is nothing sanctimonious about that. Ryan Duke used the word cremate. Cremate. Did he think that would make what he did seem less severe? Licensed funeral directors, embalmers, cremate. What he did was burn a body, the body of Tara Grinstead, by piling truckloads of pecan wood on her and struck a match. His choice of words do not make the severity of the crime less atrocious. Ryan's actions were so repulsively extreme that Tara's mere existence was reduced to less than 10 phony fragmented pieces. Our family has no body to bury. We have no grave site in which to establish a headstone. We have no urn where we can place seasonal flowers to honor and remember her. While showcasing her personal and private life in this very courtroom over the last three weeks and all over the live streaming media stations, the defense attorneys did not want Tara's excellent character to be mentioned. I was in a Zoom meeting and heard one of Ryan's counsel who also requested that teacher and beauty queen be omitted. They had no problem calling witnesses to the stand to talk about what a good guy Ryan was. Well, Your Honor, I would like to tell the court who Tara Grinstead was. I have Tara's embossed Bible with me today. On the inside, it reads, presented to Tara Grinstead by Larry, Anita, and Gabe, Christmas 1993. And in Tara's own handwriting, it says, baptized December 24, 1990, at First Baptist Church, Hawkinsville, Georgia. Tara was a Christian. That's who Tara Grinstead was. As an 18 to 19 year old college student, one of her first jobs was working in the nursery at our church in Hawkinsville. Tara loved children. That's who Tara Grinstead was. In this Bible, I found a note to Tara. Thanks for giving the children a week of real adventure in God's world and word. And on the back, it says, Vacation Bible School, June 1994. Tara loved the Lord. That's who Tara Grinstead was. During the months that our mother, Faye Grinstead, was undergoing chemotherapy for stage 2 breast cancer, 
Tara was a full-time college student and had a part-time job. Even with her busy schedule, she still did everything humanly possible to make those treatments and the side effects more bearable for our mom. Tara was an exemplary daughter. That's who Tara Greenstead was. Last week during the trial, a young lady stopped by my car. She introduced herself. She is a county judge in Irwin County with an office in this very building. She told me she had Tara as a teacher twice in high school, both times for history. She stated that Tara saw all students in her class, not just those who were popular, not just the athletes, and not just those who were easy to teach. Her exact words to me, and I quote, I am a judge today because of Miss Greenstead. Tara was a dedicated teacher who was adored by her students. That's who Tara Greenstead was. Wendy McFarland was a co-worker at Irwin County High School and a very dear friend of my sister's. Wendy was steadfast in helping our family and this community amend multiple, multiple searches throughout Irwin County in 2005 and 2006. During many of the national news interviews that Ms. McFarland participated in over the years, she consistently said, Tara not only, only supported athletics at Irwin County High School, but also the arts and drama, which is what I teach. Last Thursday, Wendy walked into this courtroom to hear closing arguments. Wendy has terminal cancer. She had just gone, undergone chemotherapy treatments on Tuesday. She was in attendance to support Tara. Her words were, to me were, I loved Tara. She is worth me sitting here uncomfortable and in pain. Tara deserves that. Tara was a faithful and devoted friend to all who knew her. That's who Tara Greenstead was. Your Honor, I could go on and on and on with stories of this nature from dozens of people, but I will stop at this point because hopefully I have touched briefly on the character of my sister that was not allowed during testimony. I cannot even begin to speculate concerning the dollar amount spent by the city of Osceola and the county of Irwin during the first few years after Tara vanished. Within just the first few weeks, there were helicopters in the air Canine units from all over the southeastern United States were here in Osceola, on the ground, searching. Giant billboards were erected in Osceola, Fitzgerald, and on I-75 in Tifton. A command center was set up at the Irwin County Senior Center. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of volunteers, including law enforcement, first responders, civil defense, teachers, friends, family, trek through revolting terrain looking for Tara, while Ryan Duke smugly sat in his home in Fitzgerald knowing these extensive and costly searches would be in vain. Ryan Duke has been in jail for five years at the Irwin County Detention Center. Personally, I have lived in a prison of hell for almost 17 years. To be more specific, 6,053 days. 6,053 days, Ryan Duke. The maximum he can serve on the charge of concealing a death is 10 years. That's only seven years less than the sentence that I and the rest of Tara's family and friends 
have experienced due to his revolting and villainous action. Ryan may be have acquitted on several charges, but does that make him innocent? Absolutely not, not by any stretch of the imagination. Judge Reinhardt, I want to voice my sincere gratitude for the court allowing me this opportunity of expression. Speaking on behalf of so many who loved Tara, it is our feeling that the legal system failed my sister. If the legal system did indeed fail Tara, I implore you, Your Honor, not to let the justice system do the same. Tara deserves and needs justice for the crimes that were committed against her. I respectfully ask this court that they give Ryan Alexander Duke for the crime concealing a death of another the maximum penalty as required by law. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Any questions, Ms. Merchant? Thank you, Ms. Gaddish. Thank you. Any further, Ms. Hart? No further evidence or impact statements, Your Honor. No further evidence.